Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be testing out two resin printers from Elegoo, the Mars 4 DLP and the Saturn 3 Ultra 12K. Like many of you, I consider myself an FDM 3D printer user, as I print functional parts most of the time and really like how you can just grab the print and use it without any post-processing. But of course, FDM printers do have limitations, like how the resolution is limited to the nozzle size. So if you need to print some tiny models with lots of detail, FDM probably is not comparable to resin printing. There are quite a lot of options in the resin printer market. The most accessible option are machines that use UV LEDs as their light source, with an LCD screen to form a pattern to block out unwanted light to cure the resin. The print quality of the printer is based on the resolution of the LCD screen that is used to block the light. I remember that three years ago, the most popular option was a full HD 1080p. Then there was 2K, 4K, 6K, 8K, and the latest 12K. For LCD type machines, you can get a basic 4K resolution printer for less than $200 with pretty decent print quality, while the highest resolution 12K costs around $400 to $500. Besides using a UV LED light source and an LCD screen for blocking light, the other type of resin printer is DLP, which stands for Direct Light Projection, which uses a projector to project the light directly at a piece of glass under the resin tray to cure the resin. This approach will make a more clear image and result in a more crisp surface on your model. However, the cost of a projector is much higher than the UV LED and LCD screen, so the resolution you can get for the same price is much lower. For $400, you can get a 12K LCD printer, but you may just get a 2K for DLP. Another major difference is the lifespan. The LCD screen can last up to 2,000 hours, while a DLB projector can last 10 times longer for up to 20,000 hours. In this video, I will print some models on both the Saturn III Ultra 12K LCD and the Mars 4 2K DLP printer, see what the difference is, and give my thoughts on which one I would pick. I would like to thank Elegu for sending me these machines, but before we get started, I would also like to thank Sunlu for sponsoring today's video. Sunlu has been involved in the 3D printing industry since 2013, so if you've been part of the 3D printing community for a while, you might be familiar with their filament. They have their own factory and a dedicated R&D team that stays up to date with the latest market trends. Personally, I really like their recycled filament series, which are priced at an affordable price of $9.99 per roll, as I appreciate the idea of reusing plastic to help the environment. Besides that, Sunlu also offers a wide range of options, including regular PLA, strength enhanced PLA+, carbon fiber filled PLA, and other more unique choices like twinkling, silk, rainbow, and wood filled PLA. They offer PETG, ABS, ASA, and flexible TPU filaments as well. They also provide accessories like filament dryers and various types of 3D printing resins. For more information, please visit sunlu.com. First, I will open the box of the Mars 4 DLP. The great thing about resin printers is that they come pre-assembled, so all you have to do is take them out of the box. The motion system of this machine uses a single linear rail and lead screw. Inside the machine, you can see a projector. Like all resin printers, you need to level the platform to set the zero position of the Z-axis, and there is a leveling card that comes with the machine. Just loosen the screws on the build plate, home the machine, make sure the build plate lies flat on the card, re-tighten the screws, reset the Z-zero position, and we are ready to print. I would start with some Elegoo 8K standard resin and print the Elegoo Rook using the default profile. The layer height is set to 0.05 millimeters, the exposure time is 2.3 seconds, and the bottom layer time is 35 seconds. And it's going to print 5 bottom layers and 5 transition layers to speed up from 35 seconds to 2.3 seconds. I will leave the other settings like the lifting and retracting speed unchanged. Slice the print and copy the file to a USB drive, then start it on the screen. Thank you. 
everything seems to be working fine. I will then use the Mercury X washing and curing machines with Sunlu resin detergent instead of isopropyl alcohol to handle the post processing. It appears that the 2K resolution on a DLP machine still looks really good. I will start a few more prints, including the honeycomb box and a few models like the Eiffel Tower, the Chrysler Building, and the Statue of Liberty. Let's take a closer look at all these models printed with the Elegoo standard 8K resin. All the prints were pretty successful, except for the Eiffel Tower, as I damaged one leg when removing it from the build plate. We will do a detailed comparison of those printed on the Saturn III Ultra 12K. Next, I will open the Saturn III Ultra. Besides using UV, LED, and LCD screens, I can see some other differences on this Saturn III Ultra. It has a metal case instead of plastic, and the motion system of the Z-axis uses dual linear rails and a ball screw. The resin tray also uses frosted film instead of a clear one. The surface of the platform is laser engraved instead of plain aluminum, and it has four leveling screws instead of two. There is a Wi-Fi antenna at the side, and we can send the print job directly from the slicer instead of copying it to the USB drive. Let's slice the model using the default profile, which cures the bottom for 35 seconds, and it's then going to print just two bottom layers and eight transition layers to speed up to 2.5 seconds. This time is slightly slower than the DLP 2.3 seconds, but the lifting and retracting speed is 30 to 40% faster than the Mars 4 DLP. As it comes with dual linear rails and a ball screw, it should be able to make slightly faster movements. Okay. This time, I will send it to the printer using Wi-Fi. Okay, we have the first batch of the same models printed with the same resin on two different machines. For the Rook, the surface has no difference at all. But for the text at the top, the one printed by the Mars 4 2K DLP is slightly cleaner, or I should say crisper. For the Chrysler building, I can't see any difference. The tiny part here was broken when I dropped the model into the cleaner. For the Eiffel Tower, they are pretty much identical, except the tower stuck to the build plate too well on the Mars 4 DLP, so I broke one leg. But for the Statue of Liberty, once again, I found that the lower part of the model printed by the Mars 4 DLP is also crisper, but you can only spot the difference under a macro lens. They still look identical from a normal distance of about 1-2 to two feet away. Now, I will switch to the Sun Lu clear resin. I'm going to print a Jeep and a Titanic model on both machines. Surprisingly, the same clear resin looks quite different on these two different machines. The print from the Mars 4 DLP is wider, and is not as clear as the Saturn III Ultra. I would say the print from the Saturn III Ultra looks more like the original color of the resin. It's similar to the Titanic model. The Mars 4 DLP is wider, and the Saturn III Ultra is clearer. The details on both models are very nice. Next, I will switch to the Sunlu Wax Red Resin to print some superheroes on both machines. Let's take a look at Deadpool. I think the 12K resolution really shows a difference here. The surface of the one printer by the Saturn III Ultra looks closer to the real model. As you can see, these textures and details are visible on the 12K print, but flattened out in the Mars 4 DLP 2K print. 
On the Hulk, the difference is not that big, and on Captain America, I can't really tell the difference even when zooming in really closely. Considering how tiny these models are, I guarantee you can't tell the difference when looking from 6 to 12 inches away. Then, I will print another larger model to stand for Dragon. I will print it 100mm tall on the Saturn III Ultra. But on the Mars 4, due to the build plate size limit, I have to shrink it to 90%. The one printed by the Saturn III Ultra did not stick perfectly, with the bottom of the tail warping a little but the print can still finish. However, there is a layer blending line here. The one scaled down to 90%, printed by the Mars 4 DLP, stuck much better, and I can't spot any imperfections on it yet. But after removing the support, neither look too nice, as more post-processing may be required when support materials are everywhere on the surface of the model. For models like this, some sanding, painting, or spraying may be required to make them look like the beautiful models you see online. Finally, I will try some nylon-like resin from Sunlu to print some functional parts. I will print needle nose pliers from 3dprintedhardware.com and an electrical tape holder. As the last dragon model didn't stick too well on the Saturn III Ultra, I actually re-leveled the build plate to make it a bit closer. This time, the nylon-like functional parts all stuck well, but as you can see, the bottom squeezed too much, similar to elephant feet on an FDM printer. For functional parts, they're both printed really nicely, and no quality difference can be spotted, except my Z offset was set a bit too low on the Saturn III Ultra. Let's talk about the pros and cons of these machines, starting with the pros. The things I like about the Mars 4 DLP are obvious. It cures resin faster, and although the 2K resolution doesn't sound that high, I can't see a huge difference even when comparing the print to the 12K machine. Most importantly, the DLP projector's lifespan is 10 times longer than a regular LCD, as it can last for 20,000 hours. If you use the same settings as the default profile, the projector will only turn on for 2.3 seconds per every 8.3 seconds. So if your print lasts for 4 hours, the running time of the projector is only 29 minutes. Theoretically, you can use this machine to print more than 40,000 of these 4-hour prints. Even if you printed with it 24-7 non-stop, you'd still need more than 18 years to wear out the projector. Of course, this is assuming that other parts of the machine don't break before the projector does. As for the Saturn III Ultra 12K machine, I can see some differences in some prints. I believe that if you want to print something like the really fancy models you see online, the difference will be bigger. But for me, most of the time I print functional parts and fairly simple decorative models, so 12K, 8K, or even 2K resolutions don't make a huge difference to me. However, I do really like the build of the Saturn III Ultra. The metal case itself makes the machine look more premium. The dual linear rails and ball screw may not make a big difference as they do on a CNC machine, but if you have a choice, a ball screw and an extra linear rail for the motion system are always better. The Wi-Fi feature is handy, and the upload speed is fast as the Wi-Fi module supports both 2.4 gig and 5 gig networks, which is better than 90% of FDM printers whose Wi-Fi modules only support 2.4 GHz. Now for the cons. For the Saturn III Ultra, I found that the laser engraved build plate didn't stick well to the red wax resin, but it sticks okay to other resins. However, the Mars 4 DLP's classic aluminum build plate sticks perfectly to everything I tested. So, I would rather have the old-school aluminum build plate as I don't want to spend more time dialing in the settings for special resins like the wax-like one I used. The next thing I don't like applies to both printers and most resin printers in the market. For now, when leveling the build plate, it requires a user to put a card or paper to set the distance between the build plate and the screen or glass, which is pretty outdated. I don't think adding a strain gauge or even adding multiple strain gauges on the build plate and underneath the screen for auto leveling is that hard, so I think Elegoo could add that feature in future resin printers. Besides that, I didn't see any big issues when using both of these printers.
But one thing applies to all resin printers, the post-processing, namely the washing and curing process. With a setup like this, you just need to move the models from machine to machine, but it still takes time. Unfortunately, that's just how resin printing works, and I can't really complain about it. Getting the washing and curing station like the Mercury X can make your life easier, but honestly, I still prefer FDM printing, where you just start the print and grab it later with no post-processing at all. But if I had to pick one of these two, I would pick the Mars 4 DLP, as I am not that insistent on a high resolution, and I would rather have a resin printer that lasts for many years instead of worrying that I may have to replace the LCD screen someday soon. But that's just my situation. If you really need to print highly detailed models, a 12K or another even higher resolution machine available in the future is definitely better for you. Anyway, I put the links to all the machines under the video description. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. If you're interested in monitoring the prices of more than 100 popular 3D printers, check out my recently launched 3D printer price tracking tool on auroratechchannel.com. Our platform constantly updates the prices of all these machines every hour. Any recent price fluctuations are highlighted for your convenience. Additionally, our price tracking feature allows you to easily find and compare the 3D printer models that interest you. You can also view the past pricing of these machines, helping you make informed decisions on when to make your purchase at the most favorable prices. For further information, please visit auroratechchannel.com.